This is the data entry portion for Module 10 Program Income. In this video, we will walk through the process of creating a program income receipt and reporting the expenditure of program income by creating a drawdown. If you have a revolving loan, the process in IDIS will be the same as program income. The best way to learn IDIS is to get hands-on practice. I want to encourage you to log into the UAT version of IDIS and enter the data as you follow the video. You can pause the video at any time by clicking the pause button in the lower left hand corner. You can switch back and forth between this video and IDIS by holding down the Alt key on your keyboard and then pressing the Tab key. If you are not already logged into UAT, pause the video and do so now. Make sure that UAT appears at the top of the screen. If you do not know how to access the UAT, there are directions at the bottom of the IDIS login webpage and also in Module 1 of this course. If you want to follow along in your manual, we will start in Chapter 6. We'll start at the home page of IDIS. To create a receipt, we will click on Funding Drawdown in the Navigation menu. The system, by default, shows the first page for activity funding. To get to the receipt screens, look to the left. Under Receipt, you should see Add, Search, and Search Accounts. If you do not see one of these links, it means that your user profile does not have the privileges for that function. If you need to change your system privileges, you need to work with your local IDIS administrator. For the first portion of this exercise, we will create a program income receipt. Let's click on the Add link. Before we start entering data, Let's first discuss the timing of entering program income receipts. The regulations state that any income on hand should be used before additional funds are drawn from the Treasury account. In terms of IDIS, this means you should make the receipting process the first step of your drawdown process. Some HUD representatives have stated that they would like to see program income receipted at least on a monthly basis. That may seem like a lot of work, especially if you have a large portfolio of loans that make monthly payments. However, HUD has stated that you can batch multiple receipts into one IDIS receipt. We will fill out the left side of the screen first and then fill in the right. You can see the fields on the left are grouped into two sections, one labeled This Fund and the other Fund from Subgrant. In general, CDBG does not utilize subgrants. This exercise will not cover creating receipts for subgrants. For additional assistance on subgrants, please refer to Appendix I and J. We will fill out fields in the section labeled This Fund and skip the section labeled Fund from Subgrant. The first field is used to indicate the program that generated the income. For this exercise, we will choose CDBG. The program year is the year in which the income was receded, not the year of the activity that generated the income. Take note that the CDBG Financial Summary Report PR26 does not use this field to determine which year to credit the program income. Instead, it uses the date in which the receipt was entered into IDIS. This is important because the amount of program income receded for a specific year will affect the public service cap and the planning and administration cap. Given this, make sure to create a receipt on the last day of your program year in order to receive any unreported income on hand. This will ensure that the income is reported in the correct year. The next field is source type. CDBG states will use DC, cities will use MC, and urban counties will use UC. The next field is fund type. You will use PI for program income or RL for revolving loan. Program income is income generated from a CDBG funded activity and can include loan repayments, rental receipts, or the sale of land. A revolving loan is a special type of income where the receipts are earmarked for an activity similar in nature to the activity that generated the income. The CDBG regulations treat the receipt and handling of program income and revolving loan differently. If you are unsure whether to use program income or revolving loan, 
Check with your CPD representative to see what fund type you should use. The amount field is self-explanatory. The next field, Comments, is an optional field but is highly recommended that you use it. It will make the reconciliation process between IDIS and your local financial records much easier. Moving over to the right side of the page, the next field is Receipt Type. The Receipt Type should only be used when creating a repayment receipt as opposed to a program income receipt. For this exercise, we will leave this field blank. Although not marked as a required field, you will be required to enter an IDIS activity ID. This field is used to indicate which IDIS activity generated the program income. If you can easily determine which IDIS activity generated the income, enter that here. In some cases, you may not be able to determine the correct IDIS activity that generated the income. For example, the repayment may be coming from a loan that predates IDIS and therefore is not in the system. HUD has stated that it is permissible to use any CDBG funded activity when creating a CDBG receipt. For any CDBGR program income, make sure that you indicate a CDBGR funded activity. The next field is matrix code. The matrix code is only required for revolving loan receipts. This makes sense if you remember that revolving loan receipts are earmarked for activities similar in nature to the activity that generated the income. The next field is estimated amount. This field is only required the first time you create a receipt for a fund type each program year. It is asking you to estimate the amount of income that will be receipted in the selected program year for the selected fund type. You should be able to find this estimate in your annual action plan. The final field is grantee receipt number. This field is optional and gives you a chance to put in a number or code to tie this IDIS record back to a record in your local financials. Now that we're finished, click the Save button. If all goes well, the system will refresh the page and give you a receipt number. It is a good practice to print this screen and keep it with a copy of the check receipts or other relevant documentation. Now that you know how to report to HUD that you have received program income, let's walk through the process of reporting the expenditure of program income. To report the expenditure of income in IDIS, you will create a drawdown voucher using the PI fund type. In the previous version of IDIS, any income receded into the system would automatically show up during the drawdown process. In the current version of IDIS, you first have to fund an activity with program income before you can create the drawdown. Given this, let's go to the activity funding screen. For the purpose of this exercise, we can use any open CDBG activity. In the real world, you should only fund an activity with program income in preparation for creating a program income drawdown. This means the next activity that will draw funds is the activity that should receive the program income funding. There are some exceptions to this, such as when a subrecipient is allowed to retain program income. But in general, don't fund an activity with program income unless you know that the activity will be the next activity to request a drawdown. Some grantees want to commit the program income to the activity that received a budget increase due to the receipt of income. This is incorrect. If you commit the program income dollars to one activity and in the meantime draw entitlement dollars against others, you would be in violation of the cash management rules, which specify use program income first. In the funding sources table, the amount available in the program income fund type will include the amount you just receded. I will assume I need to draw down $500 for this activity. Since I need to use the program income before using entitlement funds, I will have to fund this activity from program income. Notice that once I increase the funding for program income, the total funded amount is increased as well. The purpose of adjusting this activity's budget was not to increase the total budget. It was to ensure that I can draw program income when I do the drawdown. In order to correct this, I now need to decrease the entitlement funding by an equal amount. 
When I adjust the amount of entitlement funding, you can now see that I have additional funds in the Amount Available column. This newly available entitlement fund can be used for the activity that receives the budget increase due to the receipt of program income. Now that you have made all of the necessary funding adjustments, you can create the drawdown voucher to reflect the expenditure of program income. We will go to Create Drawdown and select the same activity that we just adjusted the funding for. On the next page, you should see two funding amounts, Entitlement and Program Income. You'll want to use all program income before using any entitlement dollars. The system will not force you to do this. The rest of the process is similar to the regular drawdown process. That's all there is to program income. To report to HUD the receipt of new income, you will create a program income or revolving loan receipt. To report the expenditure of program income for an eligible activity, you will first adjust the activity's funding and then create a drawdown from the PI fund type. Remember that the timing of the receipts and drawdowns is important. The rule to remember with program income is to use it first before drawing additional entitlement funds from your line of credit.